Nhiều thế này cơ. Đi. 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 <laughs> informer ma? We are informer services. Yeah. 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 对对对。哎，你不能啊！我现在没有用啊，你看不到。哎，我这是你的，哎，那个，这个我可以拿回去。因为你装这边嘛，对不对？因为你就是，耶耶。OK，OK，可以。You run into a server error. 喂，访问。好嘞。One，two，three。Uh, welcome to our fourth seminar for this week. This is our fourth week of this uh, seminar, right? So uh, today our topic will be covering the Hilbert spaces and their operator. Uh, majority will be Hilbert spaces, uh, commutator, trace, and join. Uh, I think the last thing will be covered by Dr. Lee is the uh, generalized Heisenberg uncertainty, right? So it's more generalized instead of what we study in quantum mechanics. Uh, but before that, uh, since this is an informal seminar, uh, I have scheduled a, a bit in a different way for today uh, because there are some questions from last week that uh, most of us can't answer or most of us are curious about the questions. So today, uh, Dr. Ling will be the first, uh, first uh, speaker to explain uh, the question from last week. Welcome, Dr. Ling. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so I I'm mainly here to I hopefully not take up much time. Like it's just to answer the a few questions that was raised last time, right? Because uh, last week um, Kisen was talking about what is a vector space, right? And then a dual, right? And a vector space over what kind of fields? And in and then the things about inner product space and things like that. So all this uh um. I, I believe most students will prefer to have examples, some concrete examples to try to like capture this, try to imagine what's going on, right? And uh, I can show you an example from special relativity. And in fact, uh, because you'll be talking about, you have been talking about groups also, right? We, in special relativity, we also have a uh, Lorentz group. So I'll see, uh, you know, how much time I take, but um, yes. So where does this vector space concept come in special relativity? So, Hopefully, it's not too far out of the subject because this is supposed to be quantum mechanics, right? But ultimately, um, you know, ultimately, 
you, you, the main goal of most theoretical physics is quantum field theory. So quantum field theory is special relativity plus quantum mechanics, right? So I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about the relativity part, right? So um, now for, for relativity, yes, the physics student from year one I think gone, gone through this already, right? So uh, everyone should probably know what is the speed of light, right? So uh, does anyone re remember what's the speed of light? How fast is it? Right. Is very slow, right? Uh, so it, it's very slow compared to the size of the universe. If you think about it, right? Uh, so um, then, in special relativity, we do things like we draw space-time diagram. So space-time diagram, we just take uh, this to be the x coordinate, and this is to be the time, right? And then uh, we look at how fast does the light travel. So the light will cover a certain distance in a certain time, right? And we can calculate the slope of this graph. So the slope of this graph is just taking this divided by this, right? And this is going to be the number that is one over C, right? Because this is velocity. So it's the x dt and the other way around, right? So uh so everything so far so good, right? Uh now the the other thing is there's an ambiguity of direction because the light could be traveling to the right or to the left. So this is actually plus or minus, but we don't really care. So let's just square this equation. And I'm, I'm going to rearrange this a little bit. So if I square this and rearrange, right, um, I will have c squared dt squared is equal to dx squared. So, and then I will move this to one side. So this will be dx uh, c dt squared plus dx squared. Right, and this will be because this is speed of light. This equation is satisfied. This combination will be equal to zero for light. Okay, but how about things that are moving slower than light? So if we are not talking about light, right, we are talking about other objects, right? Uh, just normal objects, particles. So particles will be traveling in some kind of motion, but we do know that particles are supposed to be traveling slower than light, right? So then. At every point, all the velocity, right? So now we can say it's even infinitesimal distance. So dx and dt. Okay, we want this to be slower than light. So if we want this to be slower than light, right? What will be the relation satisfied by particles that is supposed to be slower than light? Uh, cannot be zero, right? Zero equals speed of light. Uh, it must be slower than light. So this number must be negative, right? So it is negative if slower than light, right? And if you get something that is positive, it means it is faster, right? And it's zero if it's light, okay? So this thing over here is, I want to convince you that it is what we were looking at last week. It is, uh, actually, what's the word? Inner product, right? Inner product. Okay, and, and you show three different uh, definitions and, and very, you know, uh, as a physicist, we are a bit more rough and blurry. Uh, to me, that kind of, the, right? The, the differences is coming because of the subtleties in how you construct the, what is this thing? Thing here, right, is if I want to think of this another way, right? We want to, let's call this thing delta, okay? We want to study an object, whether an object is moving faster than light, slower than light, or equal than light, then we, we check whether this quantity is positive, negative, or zero. Okay? And then we look at this equation. Now, this equation, right, we can actually write this like a matrix multiplication. So if you look at this, right, this is actually C dt dx row vector times C dt dx column vector. Right? So if you work out this multiplication, you get this. So I so this one right to to make contact with last week. Uh, this one is our um, element of the vector space right over uh, for for us is just over real numbers. And this is the example, right? And then uh, you remember what is the dual space? So dual space is something that maps a vector into a element of that field, right? And currently the field is just R, okay? So the dual space is something that takes this vector and speeds up the R number, which is this thing. So this is the element of V star, right? The dual, 
the dual space. And I think, um, I can't remember whether you went through this detail or not, but uh, it can be shown that every for every element of the vector space, there is a associated dual, right? So if you give a vector, every vector has a partner inside the dual space, right? And if you take the vector and so given a vector, how do you find this partner? And apparently based on this quantity, right? I want to claim that this is the vector and this is the partner. So given C, D, T, D, X, right? The partner, okay, the proper word is dual, is C, D, T, apparently, apparently it's so, right? But, um, but what is the procedure? To get a partner, how do we know that it is a minus sign, right? So normally, um, now I'm I'm skipping a lot of details over here, right? But uh, one easy way to do this is you take this matrix. It's not the identity matrix. There's a minus sign here, right? And then I multiply this matrix into this vector that I'm using, right? And its partner is once you do this multiplication, you take the transpose, then you get this. So this is the rule of how you get the dual, right? So then, then we say here that this is the, the inner product. Right? So this is, in, in this sense, this will be the inner product with the vector with its own partner, right? So is yeah, is there's no space to write this, but I think you know what I mean, right? Okay, so that is the... the the inner product. So is, is everything clear? No. Um, so uh, to make contact with what I'm talking about, right? Let's go back to a familiar example, R2. Right. So R2 is I have a XY plane, right? And then uh, what you do is um, you can create a vector, right? By taking the the x dy, right? And then uh, but for the dual, right? So for the dual is for R2, right? What you normally do is you actually you just take the identity matrix. And then you take the transpose, you just get the x, the y, right? And then the the inner product with itself is just uh the x dy. The, the x dy is the x squared plus the y squared, right? So this is the square of the length uh between these two points. Right. Why? Why is there a different to getting the? So, huh? Why? Why in the second can you don't multiply by minus one point? Yeah, because uh, here is just the normal Euclidean space. You just want to get the length, right? And that is how you construct this vector. But why is it like this? Well, um, we started from the fact that we want to test whether this combination is positive, negative, or this, right? So we want to we construct a vector space that can have these possibilities, right? So this thing over here is, uh, yeah, it's called the Minkowski metric. So the yes, there's a, there's I think the the metric here is a is a mixture of terminologies. It's not exactly the same like the metric space you are talking about. That's like a like topological metric space. This one is the this word metric comes more from the differential geometry side, which is not being covered here, right? So um. Yeah, so you so is it related to gauge or gauge is also measuring something? Mm, no, gauge is not measuring something. No. Gauge is a redundant no, gauge is a redundant way to describe the, the same quantity. Right? Could be anything like electric field, magnetic field, right? So um I think gauge is more like um normally okay. gauge arise in the context of like the fiber bundles oh, yeah. and things like that, right? So uh, every fiber is the same thing, but you can transform to different points along the fiber to have different, on, on the paper, it will appear like different variables, right? Different values, but they actually on the same fiber, which means the same thing. Okay. So, yeah, so that is basically a uh, uh, Minkowski metric, right? And then, um, but there, there's more things that you can play around with this. Uh, so, like maybe in 15 or so minutes, right? I can talk about Lorentz transformation because that's, if you remember, 
relativity, right? We did more than just looking at this, right? What is the important thing about relativity? Uh, Alice and Bob, S and S prime. We want to transform to different coordinate systems, right? But from what we know from uh, the postulates of relativity, right? Um, like the Michelson model experiment, that even if you transform to a different coordinate system, transform to different inertial frames, every observer seems to measure the same speed of light. Okay, so how can we capture this using our setup over here? So uh, if you remember, right, our setup is if we measure the speed of light, this quantity must be zero, right? Uh, because this is using this person's coordinate system. Another person might use a different coordinate system. Then that second person, well, it must be, as long as the inertial frame should still be measuring the zero speed of light. Um, this, not zero speed, this combination must be zero. If you take this one plus this one square must be zero. Okay, so, uh, so that means we cannot transform to any random coordinate system, right? So all the possible, this, this criteria will constrain the set of possible uh, other transformations. So it's gonna work like this. Okay, so how I'm gonna just skip a few details, right? I'm not gonna prove much stuff, but uh, if I have, um, yeah, so let's say I got Alice, right? So Alice is using some coordinate system <coughs> and then Bob is moving relative to Alice. He is using a different coordinate system. What is the relation that connects these quantities to these quantities okay so this one is actually yeah on the first day alistair also already was talking about this right spherical coordinate system partition you transform it's the same kind of the same idea but we want to look for the coordinate transformation that respects the speed of light okay so let us assume that it is a linear transformation so it is some matrix uh multiply to this right so so it will be some things over here that uh that can be expressed in terms of the of the old coordinates and i think i'll just yeah so i think i'll just say the answer like spoiler the answer is this uh maybe you already know kosh eta So this matrix here is, is, a, is a matrix, right? And it is a member. So this thing, uh, okay, first I should probably con at least should explain to you, like why is it this way? Well, because if I want to look at this combination, right? So if I want to check this thing, delta, this square, this square, if we are measuring the speed of light, they should get the same thing. In fact, we, we want to be even more strong. The, the, whether it's speed of light, right? Time light or uh, this number should be unchanged. Okay. So if you check this, right, uh, it will be satisfied so because if you work out these values, right? So this thing will be uh, delta T cosh beta plus delta X sine hyperbolic beta, right? So if I take C squared times the square of this, okay. And then if I look at this thing, right, I want to calculate this quantity, right? So it is going to be uh, delta T sine beta plus delta X cosh uh, beta. So if I take, if I square this, I think I'll leave it to you to check yourself. If you take square this and then if I take this minus this because of the three go, the cosh identity, when you square this, there's a two cosh sine, two cosh sine, but when you minus, there's some cancellation happen that you can check that this thing here, it will be appearing exactly the same. What's the beta there? Uh, beta is the parameter, right? Uh -huh. So bit, at, at this moment, we haven't decided what is beta yet, but uh, it doesn't, so it turns out that as long as beta is a real number, this is satisfying, right? So this respects the postulate of special relativity. Like if I change to a different coordinate system, if, if the new coordinate system is like this, then this next observer will measure the same speed of light, right? If Alice measures zero, Bob will measure zero, 
right? So if you remember the year one mechanics one, is different from the Galilean transformation. Right? Galilean transformation, the velocity will change if you take a different observer. Okay, but okay. So now we can also actually explain what is beta. What is the meaning of beta? Uh, so let's take. Okay, so let us suppose right. Alice and Bob is observing something that is uh, that is at rest relative to Alice. So Alice is having something that is at rest with respect to her. So she gets zero, right? And then Bob will be, well, from this equation, it's non-zero for Bob on both, right? So for Bob, what does, what does Bob have? So Bob will have uh, delta T cosh beta, and then uh, <coughs> delta X, uh, delta T sine beta, right? So according to Bob, right, I draw apple here. From Bob's coordinate system, what is the velocity of the apple? Uh, tangent hyperbolic. Okay, so uh, yes. So if I make this equation uh, dimensionless, uh, no. Okay, let's just say this, right? So I call this u because this is the apple is at rest relative to Alice. So this velocity is just the relative velocity between Alice and Bob, right? Nothing special there. Okay. And then, uh, so then one thing to show is that, um, uh, okay, so now I make it put the units dimensionless, right? And then uh, uh, I, I want to connect something from something that's probably familiar to some of you. Uh, what is <coughs> one minus tangent hyperbolic squared? Uh, it's one over cos, right? One over cosh and one minus tangent hyperbolic square is just uh one minus u square over c squared, which means that cosh beta is cosh, right? This is cosh square. So cosh beta means inverse, and then you take the square root. So you see some familiar, right? This is our Lorentz factor. Okay, so yes, so actually this um so again, what is the meaning of beta? Uh, tangent beta is the relative velocity between the coordinate frames. And then from this tangent beta, you can use the identity. Uh, you get uh, all this, all this kind of other things. Then now that cos beta is here, right? Actually, we accidentally derived the time dilation already because cos beta is gamma. So we have shown that this equals to the gamma, right? And this is, uh, you might recall this as the time dilation formula. So the time interval measured by Alice for the same event is different time interval measured by Bob. Okay. Uh, then is there enough time? Or one last thing is um yeah one any other question for anyone? Well, is there <coughs> is there any coincidence that that matrix is a bit a, a bit like rotational? Yes. Is it uh, rotation? Rotation. No. I mean is yeah, this is an analytic movie? continuation of. The rotation, right? Um, it's just different by one minus. Sign yeah. Before. Yeah. So is it? Um, I don't know, right? It is. It's just a matter of like how we. Or is it because of there's a minus introduced inside, inside the minus c square delta t? So yes, because we want to respect this thing, right? Uh, okay. So um, the similarity for rotation is this, right? So um. Uh, I think I will come back to the answer later because it happens to be along what I want to talk about. This is an element of a group. Can you see this? Can everyone see this? Right. So a group is a member of a set, right? So let's take a set of matrices, but all the two by two matrices are in this form. And then the group is if I take two matrix multiplied together, I get another member of the same group, right? And then it has an identity element, beta is zero, right? And for every beta, it has an inverse. So you just take whatever number beta is, take the negative of it, 
that is the inverse because when you put together, you get an identity, right? So that is a group, right? And this group is uh, what we call the Lorentz group. So right now I'm only using one dimension, so it's SO11, right? Uh, so SO11 is uh, is a matrix that preserves this inner product, right? It is similar to rotation because what is a rotation group? So a rotation group is um, uh, what dimension do we want to play? Two, right? <clears throat> so so what is the element of a rotation group? It is uh, cos theta, sine theta, sine theta, cos theta, right? And what quant what object does it respect? It respects the length of vectors, right? So vx squared plus dy squared. So um, so if you if you rotate a vector using this matrix, the length will not change because you just rotate it, right? But the Lorentz group is a bit special because if you use this, right? We are not talking about rotation, but it will it will keep this. That's why the before and after transformation it remains. That's it. So that's the, yeah, that's the Lorentz group, right? So, uh, because our we are in a three-dimensional space-time, right? That means three space and one time. So the full Lorentz group in our Minkowski space is equal to three one, right? And our real world is. Let's see. So yeah, that's it. Uh, that's all I have. Thank you, Yang Ken, for this uh, very intuitive uh, examples here. Uh, this gamma managed to recall my uh, bad memory on my physics one. Because I was having a physics one and biology exam together one day, and I took biology test in the morning, and then in the afternoon, they asked me to derive this gamma. I'm not sure how to derive it. But luckily, I passed my physics <laughs> test. Okay, yeah, right. Um, sure, very good. <clears throat> uh, let's continue with this uh, Hubert space thing. Uh, probably for some of you that was wasn't here last week, you can uh, watch the recording if you like in the channel. I hope all of you are in the channel. If not, uh, you should contact Alistair. So I think today is my last talk, right? Then next week we will switch to physics, uh, quantum. Hopefully, <laughs> depend on me. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Hopefully, I will finish it today. So our end goal for today is to finish. The uh, generalized <coughs> generalized uh, Heisenberg uncertainty. So I think last week, uh, Alistair asked about the definition of inner product. I think I won't go through it now. If we have time, maybe we can come back later. Okay, after the lecture or next time. If not next time, then just uh, leave it on the notes. Okay. All right. <coughs> so um, let's recall. Uh, what we have done. Uh, for what I have uh, gone through for the past two weeks. Okay, so uh, first, uh, first week was uh, easy. So first week we have set that, okay. And then uh, we study relation between set using functions. Functions is really uh, just a random assignment. So if I have a set A and B, okay, I want to create a function between set A and B. What should I do? You, you give me an element in A, I just tell you where it gets maps to anything in B. That's fine. Okay, but just make sure that every A have a unique A. Okay. This is function. Okay. And then uh, we go to some more uh, sophisticated set, what we call group. Okay, that's an example of group here, Lawrence group. Okay, 
Uh, in groups, we also have some sort of function. Okay, right, because group is a set. We can define a function, but we don't want a random function here. Okay, what we want is called a homomorphism. Okay, I haven't introduced this for you, but uh, I'll do it now. <coughs> so let g1, g2 be two group. Uh, a homomorphism. Okay. Uh, from G1 to G2. First of all, this homomorphism should be a function. Okay. Satisfying one property. Satisfying one property. Okay, so for this property here, I want to differentiate these two groups. How do you differentiate two groups if uh, if they are of the same set, uh, same set? So group, to define a group, what do you need? I need to tell you how to combine two things, right? So let's say G1, we compose using, so for more space here. Uh, let's say I say that G1 compose using this asterisk here. Okay. So this is a law of composition. So let me remind you, this is a, what we call the law of composition last time. And G2 potentially have a different composition. Let's put it a star. Okay. So I have two groups that have different a lot of compositions. So what kind of function we are considering here? So this function phi need to satisfy for, for all for, for all x, y in g1. So phi of x asterisk y have to equals to phi of x star with phi of y. Okay, not that I have different operation here because X and Y are in G1, so I can compose using G1 law of composition. But after I map using phi, where does S and Y land? So phi is a function from G1 to G2. So phi X and phi Y lands in G2. And I can compose using G2 law of composition. Does it make sense of this equation? Any question about this equation? So what this is doing is like, uh, this is one uh, convenient way to uh, remember this. So you should think of it as uh, this uh, commutative diagram here. Okay, so what do I do first? Okay, what I do is I take two elements from G1. Okay, I can first, Compose them and then send it across using phi. Or I can send them separately first. And can you guess what I want to do next? I can compose them. And I want these two elements to be the same. This is what this uh, homomorphism is doing. Okay, making this diagram, we say commute when they agree. If you take a two path to reach the same desti destination, does that make sense? And you have two ways. <clears throat> you have two ways to get uh, to get uh, two different things. But I want these two things to be the same. Okay. If this is the same, then I will say that this diagram commutes. Okay. Does it make sense? Does it make sense? Okay. Any question? Yep. 
Yeah, commute means, uh, so I mean, yeah, what does it mean by this digraph commute? So, uh, uh, so I define, okay, first of all, this is a, uh, this is a square diagram here. Okay, I will define, define what is diagram, but uh, from what you see, you can see like this G1, G1, G2, G2 is like vertex of a square, right? But uh, I put some arrow on this uh, edges. Okay, so you can see that there are two ways going from G1 to G2. You can follow the first horizontal edges and then vertical edges, or you can follow the vertical edges and horizontal edges. And what I define is, I define what happened if you go through these edges. Okay, so if you go through first edges, what do you do? So first thing I do is I take two elements from this group and then I multiply them. Similarly, this horizontal uh, edges do the same thing. I take two things from G2 and then I multiply them. Okay, and then for the vertical, what do I do? How to go from G1 to G2? There's only one way to do it now, which is phi. On it. Any question? I mean, you can ask if you don't understand. Yeah. Yes. 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 So this 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 P here is a bridge from G one to G two. Okay. So there are two ways to get two things right. When they are equal, then we said that this diagram commute. Okay, when these two things equal, then we said that this diagram commute. So this is what this uh, homomorphism is doing. Okay. okay, so the moral of the story is if I have a homomorphism between G1 and G2, right, I can first study the multiplication inside G1 first, and then I map it across. Or I can map across to G2 and then I do multiplication there. It's the same. It's the same. Okay. Does that make sense? So first you must imagine in your mind there are two sets, two different groups inside your mind. I can do multiplication in the first one. I also can do multiplication in the second one. Any relation between these two or not? If it is related in this way, then there's a homomorphism. There's a function by this uh, property such that this diagram commute. Okay. Does it make sense? Makes sense. Okay. Oh, we we'll okay. 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 Yeah. So that's fine. Okay. Um, I mean, you are welcome to uh, stop me anytime, right? Okay. So, okay. So this is group. So last week, uh, we stopped at the uh, vector space, right? So let's talk about vector space. So in vector space, we also want to study a special function there. So what we call is a linear transformation. Okay. So you could imagine that this linear transformation also cannot be some random function. It has to satisfy something. All right. So uh, what are the what are the uh, structure we have on vector space? What can we do in vector space? Does anyone anyone know? There are two operators operation you can do in vector space. Vector addition, scalar multiplication. So somehow, okay, somehow this uh, linear transformation need to preserve this uh, property. Okay, so what do I mean by preserve? So let me write it down. So that V1, V2, V. 
two vector spaces. Okay. A linear transformation. Let's call it. Uh, what's the standard name here? T maybe. Okay. So T here. Uh, from V one to V two. Okay. First of all, this thing has to be a function. But not arbitrary function we want to consider. You have to satisfy some property. So what are the property you need to satisfy? So for every, so for, for let's say x, y, and v1, what happened? And uh, maybe uh, let's fix this uh, over on f, okay? And then fix some scalar in f. What you have to satisfy? Two things you need to satisfy. First of all, tx plus y have to be equals to tx plus ty. And then tcx have to equal to c times tx. So if you use the commutative diagram that I introduced just now, there are two commutative diagrams here. Right. So first, you can add first, and then send it across. Or you can send them separately and then add them together. Okay, I, I hope that this provides a new way for you to see this uh, equation here. Okay. Yeah. Similarly here, you got C and X. Okay. You can multiply them first and then send them across, or you can send X across okay, and then multiply by. Yeah, does it make sense? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so this is a linear transformation. <clears throat> okay, so actually what I've introduced here is like some, if we use a uh, higher level terms, these are actually categories. Okay, first is a category of sex, second category of groups, category of vector space. So categories, what do you have? You have objects and morphism. So here, first objects are set, morphism is function, second object is groups, and then uh, morphism is homomorphism, or sometimes we will set specified as a group homomorphism. Third, Object is vector spaces. Uh, morphism is a linear transformation. Okay. Uh, sometimes this linear transformation, right, in physics, you will call it a linear operator, right? You also will encounter this term linear operator, the same thing. Okay. Yeah, so this is just uh, some terminology. Because sometimes, sometimes you might think that this function is trying to transform something, or you are trying to operate on some operate on some set. Okay, so depend on some, depend on which terminology is more related to your to your purpose or motivation. Okay, does it make sense up to now? Okay, you have some objects. You have some uh, morphism here. So oh, let me write down. What am I doing here? So okay. So from this discussion, right, I want you to remember clearly about this definition here: linear transformation. This is what we are interested in today. Or linear operators or simply operators okay so when i talk about linear operators this one just a function between two vector space that's an inside this two property okay that's all that's all i want you to know um okay so uh <clears throat> i'll first do the uh, uh the direct 
formalization of uh, Hubert space. Anyone have seen this before I talk about it? Anyone? Even in QM, no? Yes, sir. So how many of you have seen this in your normal class? How many? Let me see. Three. Uh, three like that. Okay. Anyone? <laughs> okay, anyone, any other one that know through, through your own? Ah, Brian Cat. Brian Cat. How many of you know Brian Cat? Okay, okay, good. Anyone of you know from your own reading or not? No, okay. Okay, that's fine. <coughs> okay, so before talking about this, right, I need to tell you what is vector space first. Oh, sorry, Hubert space first, okay? So let's give definition on Hubert space. So, I mean, <coughs> I mean for you, maybe Hubert space here, um, the most, prob most property that you use about Hubert space would be just vector space, right? Maybe you just trick uh, Hubert's, huh? Inner product space, okay, maybe more more than that. You want inner product on it. It's an inner product space. Actually, uh, Huber spaces are a special name for complete inner product space. So what is about this complete here? Okay, to talk about this complete, right? I Maybe I don't want to go into too much detail, but I want to tell you about this uh, concept, about complete. Uh, so this is the reason why last week we go from inner product space to a known space and then to a matrix space. Okay, remember like last week we said that if I have an inner product space, I can define a known space and then I can define a, 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 a the matrix space. Okay. Okay. Okay, um, so I have an inner product space. It is also a metric space at the same time. But what about complete here? So complete here is about convergence. Okay, what do I mean by convergence? You all took calculus one or not? Calculus one, you learned uh, convergence of sequence or not? You have a sequence, right? You want to find the limit exists or not? Okay, so in a complete, in a complete, um, in a complete metric space, every convergence sequence, you can find the limit. But this is not true in general. This is not true in general. So I'll give you an example. This is not true in general. So <clears throat> let's look at some example here. Okay, so, so we can take a sequence Sn in Q. Okay, we can take a Sn in Q such that this Sn right converge to square root 2. Does this make sense or not? Is square root 2 in Q or not? No, right. How can a sequence that converge to square root 2? But I can construct for you. But I cannot show you now. But I can. <laughs> <laughs> so you need to believe me. <laughs> because uh, a bit uh, technical <laughs> if I want to do this. But I can. I definitely can. Again, okay, through some mechanism uh, I don't want to introduce, but I can. But it converts to square root two. It's not in Q. Okay, so this means what? I think this Q is not complete. It's not complete because I cannot find the limit of this sequence. If that is complete, I can find all the limit of 
convergent sequence. Then, then it completes. Complex, right? So complex means you can find all the limits of a convergent sequence. Okay. So in this case, maybe you ask me, if I cannot find the limit, uh, can you still say the sequence converge or not? Usually converge, I can find the limit, right? But you say it converges to something outside the set. Does this uh, sequence still converge or not? Yes, uh. <laughs> no, uh, cannot uh, because uh, mathematics cannot like that one. We need to create a new term. We cannot have one thing for different things. Okay, so when we say a convergent sequence, the limit must exist. I can find it inside my set, but this one is outside my set. So this kind of uh, convergent, but you cannot find the limit inside the set. What do we call it? We call them a Cauchy sequence. Okay, so let me put this down. Kind of important concept here. So this is what we call a Cauchy uh, sequence. So a sequence x1 apps to up to xn. So maybe use sp. Thanks. <coughs> Kochi, if uh, there is this, okay, so for a for any positive number called epsilon greater than zero, there is this a positive integer. Uh, by the way, uh, you don't need to copy uh, because I put the notes on the web already. You just need to listen what, to what I say and then think about what I say is correct or not. Or you have any question. So for any positive integers, uh, mn greater than n, d, the distance between sm and sn is less than epsilon. Okay, stop for a moment and think about what does this say. For every positive epsilon number, you can find one positive integer and such that everything, every two points behind xn is less than epsilon. So what does this mean? This 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 epsilon in a mathematical analysis, right? We just care about small number, not big number. We don't care about big number. We just care about small number. If this is small enough, I can make the distance really small at the end. Okay. okay. <coughs> so this is like capturing the convergence sequence. Of, right. If you want to converge to a limit, right, this means, okay, I mean, so I'll give you an example. So if you want to converge, right, like look at the function like this. If you say this function want to converge to this asymptote, what does it mean? This two point here getting closer and closer to each other. Not to asymptote, ah. you see, ah, this, this between within, within this two, getting closer and closer already. There's no reference to limit here. There's only reference to the point on the graph. You see the graph something going uh, that, that power that power. I'm going to stop already. So this you see here, you see this two point is quite far. But you see if you take any two point behind, it's like getting closer and closer and closer and closer. Okay, so this 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 inequality here actually capture the property of convergence without referencing to the limit. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Actually, it can be shown that this definition is equivalent to convergent sequence if the limit also exists in the same set. Actually, they are equivalent. Okay. If not, then you might converge to something outside.
it might con uh, it might convert something outside the center. But if you contain all the limit, then your space is complete. If you contain all the limits point, then your space is complete. Complete with respect to the limit point. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, this uh, this property actually doesn't uh, doesn't work. Doesn't uh, doesn't do doesn't contribute much in our next discussion. But uh, I want to bring up this uh, concept here because when you want to do measurement, right, you don't want your measurement to like lying outside your set. You get what I mean? You want a concrete measurement. You cannot say, hey, I measure, 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 measure. Hey, maybe it's something that I cannot measure. Then what's, your, what's the physics you are doing? You get what I mean? Anything you do is based on what you can do. <laughs> it's a topology. Like, um, how to say, uh, mm, yeah. So if it's something that you cannot measure, then you cannot. You cannot measure. <laughs> it's like <laughs> I mean, it's a bit. It's a lot to say. It's a bit. Uh, it's a bit. Hold, I mean, not hold, uh, confused. Uh, it's a bit terrifying, right? If you <laughs> if you saw, if you found something that is outside, it's like okay. How to say? <laughs> I'm not sure how to say. It's like uh, it's like you think about this uh, extraterrestrial object, right? But you cannot find them. Are you kind of like trying to find them? So are they? So do they exist? I'm not sure. But but complete is to rule out these cases. So complete is to rule out these cases. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so complete to rule out uh, the cases of to solve the problem of conversion. Okay, everything that converts, I can find the limit. Okay. Does it make sense? Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. So uh okay. So let's go to the next part. Okay. All right. So let's go to the familiar part for you guys. So what is the cat? What's a bra? Bracket. Okay. Um, so what's a cat vector? Or oh, sometimes we just call it a cat. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. So what's a bracket? So bracket is like this. You put a straight line and then you put a V and then you put a Right angle bracket. So this is the bracket. Is bracket coming for bracket? Uh? This is what I thought. Oh, yes, okay, okay, good. So bracket, ma. Get at the back. So that's why you use the right one. Okay, so this is a uh, cat vector. Maybe I put bra first. So what's the bra vector? So bra is something like this. Okay, so if you put bracket together, it becomes bracket. Okay. Uh, let me finish this and then we'll take a break. Okay, so what is a cat vector? So a cat vector is what? It's simply a vector. Yes, <laughs> that's right, that's right. That's right, that's right. That's right. Uh, later I will show you how useful is this notation, but for now it's not obvious yet but it's just a vector v in a uh, hubert space h okay anyone want to guess what is the price what's the price in where You know what? In a dual space, okay? It is still the vector. But it is a dual vector for V. 
in uh, in a door keyword space. So let's call it H two. So V door here is the uh, so it's a vector here. So I should add on here. So the door vector for V. Okay. So up to here, right? Actually, you should ask me uh, how to get this V door. From B. <clears throat> so get this V draw from B. One thing you would know about is okay, last time we talked about dual vector space, right? So dual vector space is what? Just linear linear transformation or linear operator or linear map. Okay. So actually this is a linear transformation associated to a vector B. How? Okay, I'll tell it after toilet break. So let's break until eight. Eight zero eight. Eight zero eight. Five minutes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, see what's that. What is it? Because I'm a neighbor, I'm a sequence, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then you just choose these numbers. Yeah, you choose these numbers. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In general, it's just that the limit doesn't exist, it can be converted. Converted in the same way. <音>每一个要 conversion 都会经过这个事情，就是它差不多很近了，全部东西都很近了，挤在一起。是，但是你找不到它的 limit point， 你找不到那个 l， 因为如果你记得，如果在 calculus 你要找 s m 跟 l 的距离，对 ，fix the l。如果你可以 for 每个 epsilon， 你可以找到。越来越靠近的点的话，等它就是它的 limit point。但是这里 limit point 不存在啊，我不能够这样子 define 啊。我怎么做？只要它后面有两个越来越近、越来越近、越来越近、越来越近，就可以 mimic 刚才那个 conversion 的 property， 可以 prove 的。好，就是把这里弄的 process 吧。这东西是在嗯。直接说完你吧。有，没它应该是不会用到，但是可能它会讲一下吧，因为你们没有用那个 proof， 是 analysis one 肯定用这个 proof， limit law 也是用这种东西来作为，这是新的这个材料 ，yes， 还是不会用，你啥会用？我这就会用，有吗？
Okay, so let's uh, come back. So um, I think the order is a bit uh, different in the notes. Maybe I'll change it later. So before I'm talking about how we get this uh, dual vector for V, I need to tell you what this uh, <coughs> what this uh, bracket is doing. Okay. So let's tell you what is the nice of this way of writing bracket. So we define the evaluation. Okay, we define the ev evaluation of uh, bra. Let's say push star on the cat the V in, in H. Remember that uh, a dual vector space consists of a linear map. And then what does linear map do? I feed you a vector, you give me a number. Okay, I feed you a vector, you give me a number. So I have this uh, linear map. I fit a linear map, a vector. Okay, and then this two, this should split out a number. Let's say in C. Okay. Yeah. So this is a bit like the, can you see, uh, can you guess uh, this is uh, similar to what? Inner product. Yeah, inner product. But when we introduced inner product last time, right, how do we introduce it? Inner product is a function from two vector space to number. But now you understand it as a linear map acting on a vector. So it's like a linear map acting on a vector. So there are two ways to understand this inner product. Yeah. Okay, in the moment we will see how this is a very useful thing to do. So I still haven't told you uh, the what's the V do all right. Okay. Oh definitely. <clears throat> the door vector. V star, okay, of V is a linear uh, map. Oh, actually, uh, we call it a functional. Okay, I will, I will tell you why we call it a different name again. There's so many terminology here, but this linear functional is very useful. Okay, from V to C. Because you go into a scalar field, I will call this linear map as a linear function. Okay, whenever you want to evaluate your vector into a scalar field, either C or R, then we will call this linear map a linear function. Okay, is the linear functional that that evaluates, evaluates V to one and other vectors to zero. Okay. Okay. So meaning if I take V star V, I get one. V star everything else, I get zero. Okay. 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 Good. Uh, that's that's all for this part here. Yeah. Okay. Is it okay? Everyone okay with this? Okay. So you have a vector. If I take v go, meaning what? I take the function, the linear transformation or linear map, or we call it linear functional in this case, that evaluate the vector V 
to one and other to zero. That's all. I only can read D. I cannot read other vectors. This is linear. Man. That's all. And then you should prove that this is a this is indeed a linear map. You can prove it. Okay. Yeah, you can try and prove it. This is indeed a linear map. Okay. Uh cool. Next. Oh. Definition. Uh, see which one to introduce first. Okay, so maybe we introduce what's a commutator between two operators or two linear transformation or two linear maps. Okay, so a commutator of two operators S and T. is denoted by the square bracket s comma t okay is defined by uh, st minus ts anyone know why this is called commutator do you know what does it mean to be commute last time i thought about commutative right why is commutative ST equals dx. So when does when will ST equals dx here? When this commutator equal to zero. Okay. So if I want to check two elements commute or not, I just check the commutator. If it equal to zero, then these two things commute. Okay. Very straightforward. And uh, I also can define another thing called anti commutator. of uh, x and t so we denote by the curly bracket of s comma t is defined to be what can you do <clears throat> i can change the sign okay s t plus t x so if x t plus t x equals to zero what happens they commute out to a sign. Does that make sense? If this is equal to zero, then xt equal to minus tx. So they commute out to a sign. So you need to put a sign. So we call it an empty commutator here. Okay. Huh? Okay. So there's a lot of definition before we go into the proof. So next thing is about uh, the adjoint. Of a linear operator. Okay, so this linear operator is special. Huh? This is a linear operator from V to itself. Okay, I can define an adjoint for this operator, which I denote as a T star. Okay, so when we call it, how do we find this T star? Okay, so this T star need to satisfy one property. So for all V and W in V, okay, what can I do? I have inner product, right? So I can consider T V comma W. <coughs> this thing has to be equal to V comma something acting on the W. And this thing we call T star. Okay, if this T star satisfies this property, then it is the adjoint for this operator. Oh, I think another word is uh, oh, no, never mind. Okay, yeah. So this is the adjoint of uh, operator. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You know. Okay. Okay, so this is a join. So I mean you can translate this into the Dirac notation, right? How to write this into the Dirac notation? Can you write this into a bracket form or not?
Không. Con thử try tìm kiếm. Yeah, how to, I mean. So just now I think about like how you see your product as a bracket. So how you run this into a bracket. Sorry? The bra is the adjoint of the cat. No, no, no. I mean, I mean, uh, how you write this into a bra cat form? Is that enough? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> is it correct or not? Yeah, this, this, I think that's, that's true. Let me write that. So this is what you suggest, right? Well, this is the Iraq location. <clears throat> so uh, I mean, uh, in this case, right? In this case, you need to understand TV as a linear uh, functional now. Or you need to understand V as a linear functional. And if you write it in this form. But in this form, you have an inner product between two vector spaces. TV is a vector. T star W is also a vector. Yeah. This reminds me. Yeah. What uh, what's working back? <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, vector space. Yeah. Point and the space, right? And then you can find maps on that. And then um, yeah, it's it, it's too long story. You, you have oh, okay. uh, two manifolds, right? Yeah. And then you can do something similar to what you've been doing here. So if a a vector mm -hmm. attached to a point mm -hmm. one manifold, mm -hmm. you map. To another method on the next mm -hmm. level. Mm -hmm. And uh, M and let's call it M and M, right? Mm -hmm. And M the vector has also a dual space, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then if the dual and then the map to of the dual vector to the, the other dual vector, mm -hmm. if they obey this, then it's called a push, push forward and pull back. So the push forward is a map of vectors between manifolds. The pullback is the map of the dual vector between the manifold. Okay, I need to check this. Yeah. yeah, okay. Because T star W is a map to a different vector, right? And then T V is a is a map to a different dual vector. But if these two maps they obey that equation over there mm -hmm. in differential geometry, it's called um, the T star W is a push forward. Okay. And then the T V is a pullback. Okay. They, are, they are connected by this. So is every inner product can be seen as a push back or push forward? You need to have two manifolds to define that. You, you need to have two manifolds and then on points on both manifolds, you, if you are able to define vector spaces separately for each of them, then you can do this thing. Okay, okay, good. I'll, I'll try and check. Yeah, I think. Good. Mm. Okay, <clears throat> so um, let me check. Okay, so if uh, so, definition if uh, T star happen to be T again, we will. Uh, Say that T is self enjoyed. It is it. It is, it is it adjoins. Okay. Or we call it a unitary or we call it Hermitian. I think Hermitian is the most usable word in basic Hermitian. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I think if it uh, obey the unitary matrix, <coughs> okay, no bar. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, Tisa, you, I mean, you, 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 you try to put this uni as a identity. I think, I think unitary is referring to Tisa. Oh, it's Yeah, this, yeah, this, this guy preserved it. Okay. Yeah, this this sort of uh, operator preserved in a product. It can be shown that if T side goes to T. This group of operator preserved in a product, but I won't show it here. What is polymetry? Or the commercial way. Uh, wait, wait, wait. So another way to check this uh, uh this uh, uh another way to check this uh, unitary thing is you can take conjugate transpose. If you take conjugate transpose of the matrix equals to itself, then it is unitary. What I mean by yeah. unitary is uh. oh yeah 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 yes yes oh yes 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 yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so you mean T inverse equals to T star. Yeah. That's right. That's right. This is true. This is true. This is true. So, so, so they are equivalent definition. No, wait. They uh, are. They are not, right? Why not? Because if you take the yeah. poly matrix, uh, so you can show that sigma y square is the one zero zero one, right? Yeah. So it is it transpose. But if you Transpose under the common rules, right? You in QM you call it the y dagger is you flip the sign of no, you need to take conjugate transpose here. You transpose and then conjugate it. Conjugate. Oh. You don't just transpose, you need to take conjugate transpose. Oh. Oh, yeah. You need to take no. conjugate transpose. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, you, you need to take conjugate transpose. You don't just transpose. That, that means t squared is equal to t star t. This is the Yeah. So does that mean mm. t, t, then this becomes identity, then identity equals to t squared? T star T T star equals to T inverse. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, let me think. In this only in this case is except. No, because <clears throat> because in quantum mechanics, right, you don't have. Uh, this is a unitary operator, mm -hmm. right? So, um, so un so unitary operator, you have, yeah. This is U one. Mm -hmm. But in order to get u1, this h must be permission, which is to say h dagger is equals to h or h star. Uh -huh. Yeah. Right. So you there is a connection between oh wait, wait. this and this, but it's not they are the not the same thing. Connection. It's not equivalent. I mean, okay. I mean, uh, wait. I mean, okay. I think it's just you need to remove unitary. In that definition, is, it? is permission. T star equals to T is permission. Then the eigenvalues are real. Mm -hmm. uh, unitary operators eigenvalues don't have to be real. Is it? Yes. That's in okay, let me check. Let me check again. Okay. So let's say if they are the same, then I will prove why are they the same. Yeah. If not, then uh, we try and get back to yeah. this one. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So um, yeah, sure. Okay. So. Just now talk about this uh, conjugate things, right? Uh, I mean the eigenvalue things. So let me see. Okay, so there's one property here. Position. Let me see what's the proposition. Yeah. So. All the eigen values of an 
permission operator T's are groups. Okay. Uh, this is a very nice property. Okay. So what does this mean? This means uh, this this thing will imply that uh, let's say Vn is the uh, eigen vector for T. Okay. How 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 do I read how do I read the eigenvalues? How do I read the eigenvalues? Can you use the bracket formalization to read the eigenvalues or not? So T on Vn, right? I can write like this. It's just a vector, right? I just put one straight line and a right angle bracket. This should give me what? Lambda n of this vector here. Okay. But let's say I don't want to know about eigenvector. I just want to read this lambda n of it. What can I do? What can I do? I can put a bra here. Okay, I can put a bra here. So you should think of this a linear map on this vector, ln, bn. But this is a linear map, right? I can push lambda n out. Linear transformation. I can pull the scalar out, right? And then I do this uh, vn with vn. So what is this? What the dual of Vn are just now we say? Dual of Vn is the one that evaluate Vn to 1. So in this case, I can read what is Ln. Sorry? Yeah, 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 that's what I meant. Okay? Okay, so you see, this form, if I write it in this form here, I can read out what is the eigen. Okay, good. Uh, so, so what? So how to put this? Do you want to put this or not? One. <laughs> okay, let's see how why is this true? Uh? I put the calculation already, so why is this true? Why is this true? Huh? Why is this true? Ah, I mean, okay, why does this uh, imply this LN is in R? Why is this true? Uh -huh. And then, how about this side? This side. How about this side here? This thing should be equals to Vn T star Vn, right? Because this is a Hermitian operator. And then? Mm. 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 You mean? Okay, let's try. So, T, you mean? Star VN here, and okay. this okay. Then so why is this real? 
So to, to argue this LN is real, right? You need to argue why this uh, left hand side is real. Uh, this this uh, this inner product could land in uh, complex, I guess, but it is the property of the Hermitian that uh, make this number have to be in real. So it's about the Hermitian property. So what's the Hermitian property? Eh? I suspect I copied the wrong definition somewhere inside the log. Can someone check or not? What's the adjoint property? Uh, what's the uh, adjoint? Huh? Which one? Which one? Which one? From where? From where? From this one? Uh, Easy and equal to number. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Enjoy both. How you can put that lambda n enjoy for the lambda. Uh, so, so what do you want to do? So, say again, what do you want to do? Yeah. I mean, this this side or this side? Both sides. On both sides. How do I how do I get a choice? Oh, okay. Okay. Complex conjugate equals to T. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. The other side is already on top. Yeah. Then. So, I mean. Can you just take, so what do you mean? So let me write. So you mean do something like this? Let's see. Wait, I mean, uh, so how does a uh, complex conjugate go inside this uh, inner product? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. And then how can this uh from the first one you make go inside? Okay. <laughs> sure, so you I mean this two things is com complex number you can say okay, yeah, that's fine. But how this go into the linear thing? Can we do it to every what do you mean? No, I mean we don't have this kind of uh commuting property, right? Can we commute inner product with uh with uh complex conjugate? Actually, I wasn't uh, -huh. uh I was maybe I missed it just now. Maybe you define it already, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I define it. The, how you define the uh mm. uh like mm. you have uh Right, yeah. and then a dual. Yes. Right. Yes. So this is an inner product. Yes. Right. So you get a number which is. Yes. Complex, yes. 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 Right. Yes. But if you take this, and then you take its dual. Ah uh, yes. And then you take this. This is the complex conjugate of the previous number. So which is doing it. Uh. Ah. Uh, uh, why is it true? Uh. I don't know. I, the way I think of it is this is how you construct your inner product for your Hilbert space over a complex number. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, 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 yes, 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 that's right, that's true, that's true. So this is the conjugate uh, uh, symmetry. So like uh, B A is equal to A B A B and A. Uh, yes, that's true. Okay, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah, that's so, true. So you apply it to. Uh -huh. So, uh, so now we are doing 
the main factor, right? And then you complex conjugate on both sides. So complex conjugate on both sides is going to be A, T, A, or T star, right? But if this is, if this is, if T is Hermitian, then T star is the same as T. Mm -hmm. So that means this thing is the same as this. Then on the left hand side of the equation, mm -hmm. this thing is lambda bar. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, good. Yeah. Can see it. Huh? So what 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 we prove is this number conjugate is equal to itself. What what does what what kind of number that satisfies this? Two number. Yeah. If you take any complex number, you conjugate it is not equal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, that's good. Okay. Uh, similarly, okay, similarly, you can prove that. Uh, so second theorem. So similarly, you can prove that uh, all the uh, eigen values also for the lambda n of an uh, anti permission operator possibility are pure imaginary. Okay. okay. So I want you to remember is if you have a permission operator, your eigenvalues are real, anti Permission operator, your item values are pure imaginary. Okay, you can imagine that for anti Hermitian case, right, you have T star equals to minus T. So that minus sign will change the change the number that satisfies the conjugate equals to itself. Make sense? Okay, so you have conjugate equals to minus of the original number, and this is the pure imaginary then. That it's fine, this probability here. Okay. 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 I think we're all good now. So we will try and uh, derive uh, derive the uh, generalized high number uncertainty. Okay. We'll try and derive this. So, what is Heisenberg uncertainty? What is Heisenberg uncertainty? Can I measure position and momentum in the same time? Huh? Okay. Yeah, good, good, good. I think, this, yeah, that's right. That's true. This is what I know also. But I'm going to introduce you this uh, generalized Heisenberg uncertainty on two operators so meaning we're gonna understand position and momentum as operator i think next week is it next week or not okay maybe we can do it next week okay we can understand position and momentum as two operators okay so now we are just studying relation between two operators okay let's see what happens so uh let me see yeah uh, Okay, so let me define something first. So given operator, let me fix some notation here. So let me put notation. So given operator M and uh, Normalized vector, so meaning this vector have length one for the EI. Okay, so we define what is bracket M. Okay, because I don't want to keep writing uh, bracket EI, MEI. So I'm gonna introduce this shorthand notation here. Okay, whenever I put bracket on the operator, what do I mean is I uh, take a normalized vector EI and then I do a bracket on it. So does this bracket make sense or not? Operator acting on the vector. 
so you get a vector. So you can uh, take EI to add on EI. Okay, so this what what's the end product of this? A number, a complex number. Okay, so I bracket an uh, operator, I get a complex number. Okay, yeah. so far so good. <coughs> okay, so good. So now uh take so now let's start. Take two uh, permission. Let's take two permission operators, S and T. Okay. And uh, we can consider, yeah. Where? Uh, because this why we uh -huh. can use uh -huh. as expectation value. Of yes, this is the expectation value. So this thing is called the uh, expectation value. Uh, expectation value. Yeah, this is what uh, they call the expectation value or the mean. Uh, then yeah. You just want to of a vector, then that some that vector uh, the dual at all that vector yes. produce an expectation. Oh this why why is this true, huh? Uh, I also don't know. <laughs> that's why. That's why I'm I'm trying to hide this word here. <laughs> I don't really care what does this uh, number produce. But hopefully next week when we talk about physics, we will know why is this a uh, expectation value. Why is this a mean? What 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 kind of mean does this represent? Does it make sense? I also don't know why. <laughs> so that's why I'm trying to hide this word here. I just tell you there's something like this. Okay, or no? There's, there's, actually, there's a meaning for this. I mean, I'm not sure why does this uh, represent a mean. Okay. Hopefully, next week, the physics will tell us why is this a mean. Okay. No? Yeah. All right. So, um, so we defined this. Uh, now we know it is the expectation value. So what can I do? I have two permission operators, right? Okay. I can uh, check their expectation value. Okay, I'm going to define a new operator here. So I'll call it a delta x, <coughs> small delta. is x minus this uh, expectation value times a uh, identity operator here. And similarly, I do it on t. So it's somehow like uh, you study the operator, but you take away the expectation value, take away its mean. Okay, no? I need to put an identity operator here because so that this difference will make sense. So this is the difference in map linear operator. Okay, make sense or not? How does this add on the vector? It's simply SV minus this thing times V, that's all. Make sense? Okay. Okay. How this difference, this operator, work? Okay. And then, uh, not only like this, we need to do more thing. So uh, we could consider more statistic stuff is coming in. Uh, I'm not sure why, but uh, I hope physics can tell me. <laughs> okay. So next, uh, what you can do is delta x square equals to x square minus two x bracket x plus bracket x squared times i. Is this an easy computation or not for you? Can everyone square the delta square or not? Yes, okay. Can everyone check that this is true? Okay. I just square this difference. Then I get this two. Is it okay? Everyone agree with this calculation here? Okay. This is delta square. And then, and then I take the bracket of this uh, delta square. Okay, I take the bracket of this. So I'll remind you, what is this bracket here? I take EI bra, and then take this uh, operator, add on the cat, which is EI again. <laughs> Can you compute what do I get here? Bracket. Bracket is uh, linear. Where is linear? 
I mean, this operation, this operator is linear. So when you do EI bra here and EI cat here, what happens? It's split up into one, two, three, three terms. Okay. It's split into three terms. Should I write it out for better explanation here? So let me write it out. So I split up into three terms here. I think uh, Alistair asked about this, right? When you do revision, have you figured it out yourself? Or? Yes. Haven't yet. Okay, let me talk about this now. Okay, so what is this three number here? Where is this three number here? First term is what? EI on the operator on EI. This is what I define as the bracket of x squared. Okay. How about this term here? How do you find this term? What is this bracket as? Sorry. Another scalar. So you can pull this scalar out actually. And then you left with what? EI, X, EI. So this is another bracket X. So it becomes minus 2 bracket X squared. Okay or not? Make sense? Does it make sense? Make sense or not? Everyone should make sense. Huh? This is just pulling out together. Pulling out together on it from the linear function. This one is? This x squared is what? Together, pull it out again. Pull it out again. But in the middle is what? EI identity EI. What is this? Y1. This is literally EI acting on EI. So EI door acting on EI. So what do you get? So you get square root x squared. Okay. So in the end, you will get square root x squared minus bracket x squared. This is what you get. Okay, this is what you get. All right. So what's next? So similarly, you can do similar thing on delta t squared, where you just get bracket t squared minus bracket t squared. Bracket t x squared. Okay. And then now uh, we want to define the uncertainty. And we will define this uh, uncertainty here. Okay, by the way, I think I'll take 15 minutes. Uh, if we want to leave at 9, you are allowed to do so. Okay, so I want to define this uh, big delta x and t. So what is this big delta x and t? So I just take square root of the number I get just now. I just take square root of this. And uh, what is this? Uh? Anyone learn statistic here? Okay, maybe this is not too obvious yet. So let me show another form. So x squared minus something squared. <laughs> What's this? Uh? Standard deviation because it was square root, right? Yeah, so this is some, something like standard deviation. So the position and momentum you mean in the Heisenberg uncertainty is like standard deviation of posi uh, position and standard deviation of momentum. Okay. 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 <coughs> good. Okay, good. Uh, we're pushed to this stage. Hey. Uh, What's next? Okay, so uh, what can we do here? What can we do here? Uh, Isobot uncertainty need to multiply pos position and momentum, right? Okay, we try and multiply these two things together. Okay, let's multiply these two things together. And I think I have a typo inside my notes. So let's do, look at this. Let's see, yeah. Okay. So let's look at delta x minus delta t. What's this? 
Okay, so this is, uh, uh, let's see, how should I put this? Uh, so this thing square, um, this thing square is just uh, delta x square, the expected value of delta x square times the expected value of delta t square. Okay, so what can we do here? What can we do here? This form is not nice yet. So let's look, let's return to the original form. Okay, mm, this is still not obvious what we can do, but not that uh, what we can write here. So we can split this delta x out. Okay, and then what else we can do? Actually, there's something that I haven't used yet about S and T. S and T is what? Permission. So can you tell anything about this delta T? Or not? So if I put a star here, if I put a star here, okay. so what is delta X star? Uh-huh, delta X, uh. why? You can check that this 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 uh, adjoint operator right is uh, linear, so you can bring it in. Okay, but I know s star equals to x, so I go back to x. But i star is just i. Okay, but you can say that I need to take conjugate of this expected value right, but if it is a uh, if it is permission, then all the eigenvalue is real. And so the expected value is just itself. Okay, so meaning delta s is also a mission. Okay, it's also a mission. So I can rewrite this uh, equation here. So I can rewrite this. Okay. Why I say that this is good? Why do I say that this is good? Why do I say that this is good? There's one thing I never introduced you is the uh, Kochi swatch. Don't spell swatch. S C H. S E H W A R Z inequality. Inequality. Okay, what's, what's the S E H? What's the Cauchy source inequality says? Have you guys heard before or not? So for every V and W in the vector space, we have what? The inner product V and W, okay, you take the modulus, is less than the product of their length. Okay, so why I say I'm good here? Can you see something is happening here? Can I apply this Koji swatch on How? Substitute? What, what do I substitute? Huh? Sorry? V with what? With delta x e i right. Okay. And then what else I want to do? Yeah. W with what? Delta T with yeah. 
So in this case is what? So in this case is what? So this part here, this part here, how, how can you see this? Actually, you can understand this part as delta x on EI, right? Okay. Mm. This makes sense, right? Does this make sense? Uh, this makes sense or not? Okay. So what should I mean? Uh, what do I want to mean here? Yeah, I think this makes sense. Yeah, okay, this makes sense. So this delta x e i is a vector, right? So vector on vector. And then this this guy do is this. Makes sense or not? Make sense or not? Does it make sense? Huh? If it doesn't make sense, then I'll use this one. Does it make sense? Huh? Otherwise, I'll use it. Right. For this part here, okay, let me, let me, let me, let me draw something maybe a bit easier to uh, picture this guy. So we should picture this guy as V, picture this guy as W. Okay. So we understand the bra as a linear functional, right? Here is also a linear functional. Right? Okay, no. So I mean, let me write something for you. So one thing you need to know is actually a b star equals to b star a star. This is what the property of a joint. Yeah. Okay. 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 So in this case here, uh, we can prove that the product of these two. Is greater or equals to the length of the inner product between uh, V and W. So it's delta X on this guy and delta T on the yeah. other. So I'm like kind of mixing mixing the direct thing and the inner product. But we can write this uh, more clean. Okay, we, write, we can write this cleaner. So how do I write this? So I just write it in a pure Dirac form. So it's like this. So that's why the Dirac way of writing is uh, clean. So do I have a square here? Does uh, Cauchy inequality have a square? I think there's a square there. Okay. There's a square here. Oh, there's a square here. So there's a square. Here. Okay. So that's why the Dera formulation is cleaner. Otherwise, you think I need to write anything. So Dera where is cleaner? Is it cleaner? Less simple. Right? Okay. Okay. So what is this? Uh? So this is really the expectation value of delta x times delta t, small delta. Okay, so if this guy is uh, positive, uh, then we are done. If this guy is positive, we are done. If this guy is positive, then we are done. Sorry, delta x and delta t. Okay, so now we need to analyze what is the expectation value of delta s times delta t. Okay. Okay. Uh, so we can understand it from the uh, operator delta x times delta t. So what is this? Uh? Can anyone recall what is this? S minus the expectation value of x times the identity and uh, t minus the expectation of t times identity. Okay, there's one clever way to write this. There's one clever way to write this. So you can write this as half of the bracket of delta x, comma delta t, plus half 
of the anti commutator of delta x, comma delta t. So this relates this thing to a bracket, either bracket or curly bracket, square bracket or curly bracket, or the commutator and the anti commutator. Okay. <clears throat> so what's good about this thing? Okay, what's good about this? So we have uh, this uh, lemma here. So if uh, x and t are Hermitian, okay, then the commutator of delta t and delta s is anti Hermitian. Okay, and the anti commutator is Hermitian. You want to believe or want to try and prove one of them? But okay, let's pick one of them and prove. Which one? You want permission or anti permission? And yeah, okay, let's put the NT one. Okay, so uh, let's calculate what is delta x comma delta t first. So what's this guy? Uh? So this is delta x delta t minus or plus minus delta t and delta x. Okay. So to prove that this is anti Hermitian means what? If I take a joint of this guy, it is equal to the minus of the original one. Okay, so let's now take the adjoint of this. So a joint respect multiplication and uh, okay, respect multiplication but in a different order, and then respect addition and subtraction. Okay, so we can bring the adjoint in. Uh this is this is this is the part I skip. This is called a C star algebra. Yeah, this is the part I skip. Okay, so so let's bring the join in. Okay, and then if I do this adjoin, what do I get? Delta T adjoin, delta X adjoin, minus delta X adjoin, delta T adjoin. But we just now we have, we have proved that delta T and delta X are permission. Okay, so these are just delta t, uh, delta x, delta x, uh, delta t. So what is this? This is exactly the minus of my uh, bracket or the commutator. Okay, so this is anti Hermitian. Similarly, you can do it for the uh, Hermitian one, for the anti commutator. So this this means what? <laughs> this means what? This operator, this commutator is anti hermitian meaning the expectation value of this commutator is, is what? pure imaginary okay so this guy has a pure imaginary imaginary uh, eigenvalue and then the bottom one is real. Okay. Okay. So far, okay. Okay, so far, so good. Okay, good. So uh, let's return and uh, study what is this. Uh, where, where did we stop last time? So we stop at this uh, this expectation value here delta x times delta t. Okay. Delta x times delta t. Okay. So just now we split delta x and delta t into the addition of two uh, operator here, anti commutator and commutator. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So commutator and anti commutator. So the real part will come from the 
and decommutator. But the imaginary part will come from the commutator. Okay, so we can form this uh, equation here. So let's form this equation. So if I take the length of uh, delta x of delta t squared, okay, this guy is what we are interested in. So you square this, meaning you will get the length the square of the real part, imaginary part first, plus one over four of the real part. Okay, so this 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 term is definitely greater or equal to one over four of the imaginary part. Okay, which is this. But what is the bracket of delta t and delta x? Delta x and delta t. Should we compute this? Let's compute this. So what is this bracket here? Okay. So just now I write it out already. Delta x, delta t minus delta t, delta x. And delta x is what? x minus bracket x of identity times t minus bracket t of identities minus t minus bracket t of identities times x minus what do you get actually here? You quickly compute. So let me compute. X t minus x square t i minus bracket t i plus bracket t bracket x i. Okay, and then take away everything here. So I have t x minus t of bracket x i. Minus square root uh, bracket t x i plus bracket t bracket x i. Can you see any cancellation here now? What thing cancel? Do you see a repeated item? <laughs> what are the repeated items? STI TXI, right? XTI TXI, STI. There's two types of STI here. So S bracket TI or bracket XTI. They commute because bracket of uh, operator is just a number, it's a scalar. So you can pull it out. Okay. And then the bracket T bracket S also cancel because due to the sign we have, the minus sign. So you left with what? ST minus TX. And this is the bracket of ST. Okay, so really this thing is equal to one over four of uh, bracket. Expected value for your uh, NT commutator, uh, sorry, for your commutator. Okay, so since we have both sides square and uh, we can uh, reduce it, so hence we get delta x delta t greater or equals to half of uh, the expected value of the commutator of x. Okay, so uh, what's the commutator for Heisenberg uncertainty? Uh? PQ, or maybe I think you write delta P and delta. How do you do you use a uh, delta P and Q? Uh, X. S, uh, X, like this. Okay, so what's the commutator? <coughs> Negative I hash bar. Identity. Uh.
then is this is the difference of you suck, suck this bracket into here. So, uh, so what I prove is for general two operators, position and momentum are just one type of operators. So if this 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 thing is non-zero, then uh, they won't they they have a uh, uh, uncertainty. I'm saying yeah, there's a uh, a commute up to some. Okay, they don't commute directly. They commute up to some. Maybe they would it would generate some energy, right? Is it this is is this what it means? This is what it means or not? If this is not zero. So when they commute, some energy will appear or not? What what the physical meaning if this bracket is not zero? So you observe position first and then you check the momentum, or you check the momentum and you observe the position is different up to some. You need is this what this uh related to? Not really. If you commute the two process, yeah, I guess if you operator mm. by the self has no meaning, but if you act on the vector, right? The vector. Means, yeah, so you measure the position first, then you measure the momentum. They get the different result. They get different result. Yeah. Isn't it the commute then the same angle state for that? Yeah, but that's, that's the mathematical meaning, right? Like, oh, oh, okay. Oh, okay. They don't share the same eigen state, yes. Yeah. They don't share the same eigen state. But if you measure something first, if you measure x first, then the state of the system is going to be one of the eigenstate of the x. And then if you measure p again, because it's not an eigenstate, then the outcome is uncertain. That's why you got the uncertainty principle. <coughs> okay, maybe we can talk more about this next week. Is it? Right. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so next week we'll hand over to the physics part. So hopefully we'll make sense of these uh, maps inside quantum mechanics. Yeah, so any question before we break or not? Yeah, so the moral of the story is this isotherty uh, depends on the commutator of your operators. Okay. Any question? Yeah, so we won't be able to cover the uh, operator parts. Uh, if when times come, we need this, and then we will uh, do it again. Okay. So next week, we will go into uh, quantum system. Okay. Yeah. So if you have any uh, requests, right, maybe you can uh, send to the uh, organizer here. Do you guys know the organizer? Or... Who, is, who is the organizer? Huh? Just Alistair. Okay, contact Alistair. Okay, if you have you have any special requests, uh, if you, when you learn QM before uh, or you do your own research, uh, you have some question uh, you want to know, you want to find out, Maybe you can ask him and then we can try and discuss it here. So this is the purpose of this uh, seminar. Okay. No? Okay. Okay, so thank you for tonight. Uh, hopefully see you next week. Next week is final week. Yeah, should be. Yeah, should be a final week. Okay. And uh, we will see whether if we want to continue this kind of seminar in future because this depend on the schedule the student schedule right and also depend on the feedback from you whether you think this is helpful or not 
Okay. Yeah. yeah, maybe after week five can put a feedback form. Yeah. Whoever that attended, you can uh, give some feedback. And uh, yeah, we'll see if this is what to do or not. Because this is actually arise from some personal uh, discussion or conversation. And uh, we try to include you guys because we think that maybe you can uh, benefit. Okay. If you don't benefit, then maybe don't include you guys. <laughs> so I mean, yeah, that's that's the that's the reason we make this happen. Okay. Yeah. Okay, now. So if we receive good feedback and then there's good discussion, uh, good vibe, learning vibe here, then we can keep this uh, going on. If this uh, help you to study during your degree, uh, whatever, right? Because maybe going to lecture maybe is a bit down, you think. Then maybe have some different kind of uh, interaction will help you to uh, or motivate you. Yeah, because I was also a lecturer. I mean, sometimes I also feel that my student felt a bit uh, out of Norway, right? Because your thing is like this. So when you go to some event and then you think that I'm not going to get anything out of it, then you will keep this attitude or keep this thinking. And then by going to different events, okay, that do the same thing, but in a different different atmosphere, maybe it will make you feel a little bit better. This 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 is very special. I mean, this is really very special. This I, I cannot describe this, but um, but uh, I think you can try and experience this. Yeah. Not just going to lecture to get knowledge, but through discussion with, uh, with your peers. Okay, I don't want to say friends, but peers. Around same age. Then this is good. Even better than lecture, this actually this is this kind of discussion. You will gain more. Because you will be more natural to discuss among peers. It's not like when you ask teacher, oh, am I asking stupid thing or not? Am I asking a wrong thing or not? But among peers, you can ask anything you like. Okay. It's like uh, Chinese, there's a saying, it's like, Tema Singko. Okay, you need to be creative in knowledge. Okay, otherwise, for you, knowledge is that. Is that. It's real that. But for this kind of knowledge, right? For the person who found them, right? That thing of this knowledge is very real for them. So you need to experience the real part of the knowledge for you to really appreciate it. Otherwise, it's just something on the paper or some exam marks. That's all. Nothing. Okay, then this is not healthy for research. You need to. Think of this as a real thing. It's a real life. You can apply. Can I make this theory better or not? Can I have a better way to describe it? Or not? Only then uh, you can uh, learn more. Okay. Anything to say? No, I, I mean, we finish now. Or... <coughs> Finish. Okay, let uh Alistair have a last word and then we can finish. <laughs> last word. <laughs> last word. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, this is the fourth week of our seminar, right? Uh, he thinks that uh this seminar actually come for our personal conversation as well. Okay, so uh the same thing I said last week is uh. If have any like common issues, like what he said, peers or friends, or even with lecturers that even lecturer can't answer the questions. Uh, that, that is normal. This is what we do research, right? So, uh, uh, if lecturer can't answer, like peers can can't answer you. Uh, can there be uh, organize the same uh the similar seminar that uh we try to discuss and find out the answer what we uh what we can try. I mean. We tried the, our best to find out the answers, right? So, uh, don't always lock yourself, uh, just between your friends or either whenever you have questions, just look for lecturer because somehow 